After high school, there was a gap. I didn't know what was coming. And I moved to this town called Cave Creek, Arizona. It was beautiful. It was kind of on the foothills of these mountains. My stepfather family had a kind of this deserty house there. It was secluded and cool, but no place to work. So I got a job at the grocery store. But I remember complaining to my mentor, Don Weldon. He said to me, how can you do the big things if you can't do the small things? <music> Welcome back. I'm Michael Joy. This is Absolute Joy. And we're in the middle of telling some stories about my early jobs. My early jobs turned out to be my only jobs because after college, I was self-employed throughout. But I got a job at the grocery store. I don't know what it was called. I can't remember. It was like a Jewel Osco here. The only job that was available was bagging groceries. No, it wasn't that. It was, I was hired to pick up cardboard after the night stalkers from 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the morning. Now, what's a night stalk? Stalk? Stalker, S-T-O-C-K-E-R. They were the people, the union guys, that were replenishing the shelves at night. And so they would drag around a pallet of uh, stuff they needed to put on the shelves. And because they were so well paid, they would cut the boxes, put the stuff on the shelf. Grocery store didn't want to pay for them to pick up their trash. So I would walk around going up and down the aisles in the morning with a another hand truck and a Gaylord on it. A Gaylord is just a, card, a big cardboard container when you buy watermelons at Costco. They put them in this big sort of barrel of uh, uh, on, a, on a pallet. I'd go around and just pick up cardboard in the morning for a few hours, and then the store would open, and then I would go to uh, bag groceries. It sucked. <laughs> I remember, the, again, the job turned into cleaning. Eventually, they were just asking, oh, send that kid to clean up the bathroom. Send that kid to clean up the loading dock. Now, let me tell you about a loading dock in Arizona. You can have rain and then not have rain and then it's really hot. And the loading dock, which drops a semi down low, so the bed unloads at, at an even cement level. For whatever reason, that loading dock drain was broken and it has full of water. And whoever decided to be messy about it had all sorts of produce or some sort of trash was in the water. And then during the day where it would get 120 degrees, it was like this stink soup. And they're like, you gotta go clean the dock. And, and I was like, son of a... And I remember, it was minimum wage, you know what, three bucks an hour or something. I didn't care. I was just happy to have the job, but I remember complaining to my friend, uh, my mentor, Don Weldon, at Creative Guidelines from the, the Metaphysical Center. And that's where I got one of my first early life lessons. And he said two things to me. He said, how can you do the big things if you can't do the small things? And uh, I'm like, ugh, touche. And he also said, he said, no matter what job you're in, and he taught, taught me about divine love. And he said, if you're sending love to every person that you bag their groceries, he said, imagine how many people you touch. And I thought, okay, I'll make that my my mission. The thing is, is, is that I was only making three bucks an hour and it wasn't enough. And uh, I heard about I could get a busboy job at one of the restaurants uh, down the street. And that was owned by Crazy Ed. And Crazy Ed built, he sold the Horny Toad, which was a well-known establishment. And he immediately set up the Satisfied Frog and it was this little country western town. It was like a strip mall, except you walked around like it, you could have a gunfight. All the shops had like bars on the window. They were thematically like Disney. There was even a bank there that really worked, but you go up and there is the bars. This was pre-Hooters. All the girls were in short shorts and tight shirts. It was fantastic. Sawdust, peanut shells on the floor. As long as you didn't slip and fall on your ass, you were gonna be okay. On the weekends, they had loud music and a couple things happened at that job. Um, that's actually where I ended up stealing my first horse. <laughs> 